part and lap here with alternative heating solutions. If you've took our advice and the advice of most of the online forums, when you installed your boiler, you could put a flat plate heat exchanger in for your domestic hot water. Uh, they do need flushed once in a while. I already took the caps off of these. The one down here is normally what I use. But what I use, and it works well enough, is just regular old vinegar. Now, if you had us install the system, we use these webstone valves. You can see by the way the arrows are on the handle. Right now, it's going to flow right through it. This is actually the glycol side of my snow melt. We're not going to flush it. Just this is the easiest one to show you. So now, when you rotate it 90, the fluid's going to go this way. So you would hook a hose to take the cap off, hook a hose there, open this one, and that would allow you to back flush it without getting into the rest of the system. But, being that this is glycol and pressurized, you shouldn't ever need to flush it. If you do, you have other issues going on. Same way if you're using a flat plate between your wood boiler and an indoor pressurized boiler, you shouldn't need to flush the pressurized side. Just a good way to get air in your system is all that's going to do for you. So it's been running 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, probably just a little bit of lime and calcium there. Even though we have a water softener and our hardness is less than a grain, we still have to clean the faucet heads about once a year. We'll hook it to the domestic side of the other flat plate and see how cruddy it gets. So this has run quite a while. You can see the cruddy water in. This is all the domestic side of the flat plate. This is why I will not install a system without the flush purge valves on the flat plate. There's no cheaping out on this. If you don't want to pay for them, then do it yourself. I won't do it. Yeah, the other stuff was cruddy enough. I dumped it out, flushed it out in fresh water, and then added another gallon of vinegar. And it's clean enough for me. I'll go ahead and use what's here to flush the last side of the domestic plate, and we're done. If you don't have one of these handy dandy uh, centrifugal pumps, for years I just used the old reliable puddle pump here, garden hose connection on it, just drop it in the bucket. Dump your vinegar in, start it up. Self priming, no messing around. That one will give you more pressure and more flow. If you're just doing your own, that's the way to go there. Generally a little cheaper. It's self priming and self draining, so you don't have to worry about it freezing up. Done flush the vinegar out of the flat plates, return the valves to their normal operating positions. Now, one thing I should mention. On my heat exchanger, I'm using a, a monoflow T, which is like a primary secondary loop. What you're going to want to do though, if you have any secondary loops afterwards, from flushing it, it's going to have a little air. This is my furnace secondary loop. You're going to want to turn the valve off to the pump. Same here, that's my snow melt secondary loop. We'll turn that valve off before you restart the circulation. If you don't, any air that's displaced out of a secondary loop could find its way into one further downstream. If that happens, then you'll have to bleed those too. This is Martin Lappin with Alternative Heating Solutions. If the women don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy.